which is just a straight vertical suplex lift, and then kick your legs out, DDT them. I mean, if we if we want to get super technical, that's a brain buster, but yeah. You know what? You know what? This is why we can't have nice things. I'm just <laughs> Let's get good. Welcome back to the second episode of our GFW edit creation tutorial. This is 102, and we're going to be talking about moves today. As always, we are joined by our awesome color commentator, Goth. Hey, hey guys, how's it going? Who is in the production van beating Carl with a whip right now? Uh, well, not currently. <laughs> He's actually asleep. <laughs> He's actually asleep. Wait, hold on. He's actually asleep on a cup of coffee. I wonder if he'll drown. That'd be good. <laughs> Wow, okay, so that, that just got real terrible real I fast. I have no love loss for Carl at this point. Alright, so let's let's switch you guys on over to the game screen here. Get game screen. Hello? Hello? Ah, there we go. Sorry about that, guys. It took a second to uh, kick the game in. Anyways, we are already on the edit mode move list for Phoenix. This is the wrestler we were working on yesterday. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how we design the move sets of our edits on GFW and and sort of how we balance them to try to make the matches more entertaining. Okay, so the first thing that you pretty much want to do is if you have, you should have a finisher and some signatures in mind. The reason why is because if you think about a match structure psychologically, if your finisher targets their back and your entire moveset targets their legs, that's just going to be a little weird. That, that's not yeah. a good in-ring story to try to tell. Um, so we know for a fact that we want Phoenix to have the Swanton Bomb as a finisher. That is his finisher, the Flight of the Phoenix. Uh, interesting implications of choosing the Swanton Bomb here. If we were to, say, then add in a double rotation Moonsault to his regular moveset, that would kind of damage the whole idea of him even having the Swanton Bomb. So, like, that's another yeah. thing you want to consider, is if your finisher is not very flashy, or it's a certain level of flashy, make sure that your other moves don't outshine it, because that's just weird and doesn't make a lot of logical sense. Um, and now I'm sitting here going, like... Is it, is it under here? Yeah, there it is, Senton Atomico. Okay, so we'll give him the Senton Atomico there. That's gonna be his finish, which we can't mark right now because it already gave him a finish. So we're gonna go and uncheck the default finish it gave him and all the default signatures. A Powerbomb Whip. Good job, game. Best finish ever from like 1985. Uh, okay. Somebody is gonna somebody is gonna ream me for that. Just just so you know. Yeah, you you're gonna get somebody from who's into the territories and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I want to be clear, y'all. I respect the territory days. They were legit. I get it. But th this is 2019. Power bombs can finish matches, but they're generally not the finish unless they're like a special bomb. Uh, okay. So we've got the Senton Atomico, we also know that we want him to have his Ashfall DDT as a signature. Since the Ashfall DDT is a standing grapple and a front grapple, I'm gonna put it in our front grapple small medium. That's just for me, for the for doing logic later. Because there are those small plus medium slots, I tend to try to use those for signatures and finishes if I can, just because organizationally it makes sense. Mm. So in this case, we're going to grab the Dangerous DDT, I believe that's it. Yeah, I called it the Deadly DDT, but I was wrong, it's the Dangerous DDT. The fact they even have this makes me happy, because like, none of the, the 2K games have really had this in this format the way that I wanted it, which is just a straight vertical suplex lift, and then kick your legs out, DDT them. I mean, if we, if we want to get super technical, that's a brain buster, but yeah. You know what? You know what? This is why we can't have nice things. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, so for another signature, we know that we want to have like a running sort of flying suicide lariat. If we can find something else that's a little more suicidal, I don't mind that either. Because the whole idea here is that he should crash and burn if he whiffs. But I'm reasonably sure that a flying clothesline is probably the best bet we've got. Yeah. At least at that level. Oh god, the Essex Destroyer looks good. Uh, one of the other things we do do when we're we're making new move lists for people is we actively try to avoid moves that are used by other wrestlers on the roster. 
as signatures or finishers. So like the Essex Destroyer is uh, Taryn Johnson's finisher, the Heartbreaker, which is why while I'm admiring it, there's no way that's going on the move list. Mm. Uh, okay, Falling Lariat looks kind of cool. Flying Body Attack, maybe in our medium slot. I don't want that in our large slot though. Uh, just because it actually has the potential to end a match. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Indeed, it does. <laughs> you, you sound a little miffed there. Oh no! Wait. It was. It was. That isn't the move. Never mind. No, it wasn't. It was the. No. <laughs> it was the elbow drop pin. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. I, I'm still saying to this day that wasn't my fucking fault. I I, I haven't even looked at the logic yet. Um. But if, if that's set over 3%, it kind of is. Kind of. Anyways. Hey, hey, you sent me the list to, to do it, and I followed it to the letter. So no, 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 no. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go with the flying lariat. The flying head attack right there actually looked really good, too, and I, I considered that for a moment. But at the same time, uh, it doesn't feel smash mouth enough. Like, it, the flying headbutt there looked like sort of a side Kokeshi. It seemed honestly a little bit more technical than I would expect Phoenix to be. Like, the Flying Lariat is literally, I jumped in the air and put my arm out. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to go with that. Uh, in our medium slot here, I think we will take that Flying Crossbody. There we go, because that's a nice little medium level pin. And it is kind of suicidal, because if you whiff that, it doesn't necessarily feel good. Uh, okay. So with that set, we've got three signatures. We kind of recognize that our signatures are working the body. And our fit... Well, our signatures are working body and head because we have that DDT, which is where we start to get into interesting territory because realistically, uh, that dangerous DDT is actually sort of outside of our psychology right now because if our finish is the Senton Atomico, then we should be working the body and that DDT works the head, which is okay. A lot of wrestlers do sort of split their focus between two body parts. That just means that as we're building our move set, we're gonna wanna put some moves in for both of those because that'll keep the dangerous DDT viable as a finish. Mm. Uh, so after we've got those set, we're going to go right to the, the basic moves here, just the starting strikes. Uh, for our small slot, we can kind of pick anything. The one thing you do want to be careful about is stuff like uh, this, the middle kick. That's a little bit much for the start of the match. Like, if you really think about it for a minute, when was the last time you watched a wrestling match on any program where the match opened with somebody throwing a middle kick? Usually, we get a tie-up, we get an exchange of uh, punches, we get a jab, something like that. And then as the match progresses a little bit, we get that middle kick. Uh, we don't really just start out with the middle kick. Kind of like you don't usually start out with like a high-angle drop kick. That's something you see a little bit later. Um, so we'll want to avoid stuff like that. Same with that Muay Thai middle kick, uh, the rounding middle kick as well. Like. Basically, the middle like, kicks are the ones that I tend to avoid yeah. in general because they're just too much for the beginning. A leg kick in the beginning, to me, makes more sense. Yeah, like, the only time you would see something like that that early is, is at the end of a chain grapple to sort of break it up. Exactly, and that's, that's... That's the earliest you would see it. Well, and that's the thing. The one exception I give to that rule of not using middle kicks is there is one in the strike exchange, and I use that because in a strike exchange, middle kicks make sense. Hmm. Um, okay, so we want to start with just basics here. We're going to go with just a punch. Just a... Nothing special, that's just a punch. Uh, a gut kick here in our medium slot is fine because we're going to open the match using the small and medium slots. One of the things you'll notice about the way the moveset and the logic works together is that we're trying to create a unique feel to the way that the wrestler performs during the early match, the mid-match, and the late match. Uh, that being said, the mid-match is actually the shortest amount of time they spend there. They spend a long time in the early uh, damage levels, then they get to the mid-damage levels, and then very quickly they're onto the large damage levels. So the mid-damage levels need to be... They either need to be less distinguishable than the other two, or you can make them more distinguishable than the other two to get like a really smooth match flow. Uh, so I'm going to take the voice off of these just because I don't like hearing them when I'm picking out moves. <laughs> <laughs> I legit can't hear them right now because of our sound setup, but I know you guys can. Yeah. And when you're picking a move and you hear, oh, 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 like over and over <laughs> again, it gets annoying after a while. <laughs> oh, darn. My, uh, sorry guys, my sinuses are being a wreck today. Uh, okay. So the American hook here in the big slot isn't necessarily bad. Uh, 
In fact, what I usually do with this first big slot is I try to pick a strike that you can throw without them being groggy and without it looking bad. So this Lariat attack right here is actually a better choice than this American Hook. Although the American Hook does work. Like with the Lariat attack, if you whiff it, it's okay. Like it looks good to miss that attack. So putting that in that slot right here is a sensible thing to do. Mainly because you can still program this into like the middle match to just do as a standing strike and if it hits it looks good and if it misses it still looks good. On the other hand, you have stuff like, uh, let's see, what's a good example of things you should pretty much never ever have in regular- that. If you put a leaping cutter in your regular standing strike, uh, logic, nine times out of ten, it's gonna whiff and it's just gonna look silly. That is one that I usually zero out in the standing strike logic and I only put stuff into for the groggy logic. Uh, but that's up to you. You can still put it in the standing strike logic, but if you do, you should put it in really low so that it doesn't A, cause them to miss a whole bunch and waste stamina, and B, look like a botch fest all match. <laughs> uh, Marcus, or rather Goth, will, will back me up on that because uh, one of the moves that we see quite commonly is the flying roll-up. And this mm -hmm. one, anytime it's attempted and they're not groggy, it just looks like a botch. And it's not, it's not something you really want to see in your matches, and it has a tendency to interrupt the match flow. Uh, okay, so now we're going to move on to here, and about here in these really higher-end uh, strikes is where I want to start to see some kicks from, from Phoenix, and we're looking for stuff that's fairly, like, basic. Like, he's not going to be doing anything super crazy, but, you know, a wheel kick is probably too much. A backspinning kick, probably a little too much. Uh, something more like an enziguri, fine. Enziguri's are pretty simple, really. Okay, so let's do an Enziguri there, and then for his big, big strike. Now, this is, because this is a small medium slot, it's something I'm inclined to use as a signature, but unless we find a strike that really seems like it should be a signature to go here, I probably won't in this case. Um, and that's, that's generally how I do it. If I find a move that I feel like fits in the moveset, but it's really flashy and special, then that'll end up being a signature. Like, for example, if we decided to give him this high angle drop kick, for a dude his size to hit that, that's kind of a big deal. So I might make mm -hmm. that a signature. Um, and I'm not necessarily against that because the high angle drop kick is another one where if you whiff it, like, you eat crap, and that is kind of what we're going for with him. Uh, jumping high kick looks a little too much like the Enziguri. Jumping knee kick could potentially work, but I feel like a knee might be too technical. Um, a front drop kick might be nice. Yeah, I mean, a front drop kick is something that's perfect because it's like high risk, but it's not like, I'm a high flyer high risk, it's, I threw my legs forward, God help me if it misses. <laughs> yeah, like, and it's not like that, it's like, if you whiff it, it's like, um, especially if you, uh, pair that up with, like, say the, you know, when they Irish whip somebody off the ropes, and then they go for the front drop kick and it misses, it actually looks straight out of a match. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because that is a common spot in, in real wrestling matches, is just Irish ripping them and then go for front drop kick and landing straight on their freaking back. And there we go, front drop kick. Perfect. Uh, okay, <laughs> so now we've got that going on. Uh, for our running moves, we have a shoulder tackle, which is fine. Flying body lariat, or flying body attack, and then a flying lariat. All of those are great. Shoulder tackles, this is something I do want to go over. Your your small running move, once again, we're trying to set the tone for the... the Excuse me, good. Uh, Carl is waking up and he's going to cause some havoc. I'll be, I'll be right back. No worries, no worries. Uh, so anyways, when you're doing your running small, you want to remember you're trying to pace the match. So while we could go with the original Axe Bomber here or a Punching Lariat, a.k.a. the Clothesline to Hell, that seems a little bit much. In this slot, what you're generally going to want, you're going to want something kind of simple like the shoulder tackle we have. Other great examples are just the basic clothesline, uh, the chest slap. There's, there's a ton in here. The elbow butt is another great one that I have a tendency to use in the small slot just because it makes sense in the early running to see those moves. What it doesn't make sense to see in the early running is necessarily a head scissors whip. On a luchador, you can probably sell that. Maybe on medium damage, uh, I still wouldn't put that on light damage. Jumping DDT, like you're not going to put that in small damage. So for this one, we do have the shoulder tackle, but I think what I'm going to do is go with the elbow butt, because I feel like that's a little bit more Phoenix's aggressive roughneck style. 
Uh, and then we have the Flying Body Attack and the Flying Lariat. I think that's great for his running moves. Let's go look at his counters. Same things with the counter small. You obviously don't want... Uh, what's a good example? The Jumping DDT again. Or, like, even a Lift Up Slam. That, that's a little bit much uh, for opening up here. So what we do want is something nice and simple. And if we really want to, we can even go with the Elbow Butt again. But that seems a little bit... Uh, wasteful to me to put another slot on that specifically. I think a Lariat here as a basic counter off the ropes is pretty good. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Kitchen Sink. I will almost always include Kitchen Sinks in movesets just because as a, a counter running move, it's just, why wouldn't somebody use it? Like, you lift your knee and it hurts them, and that's not a lot of effort for a pretty good outcome. Uh, so Kitchen Sink is one I, I don't mind having here. And then for our big one, that's where we really want to have something that kind of stands out. And maybe if we get something that's, uh, you know, iconically, well, not iconic enough, but something that's a big enough spot, we can make that into a signature too. Like that Manhattan Drop B right there could theoretically work because that, if you have a B variant, it'll leave them groggy. So we could use that as a signature, but I don't know that that's necessarily something that I want. Uh, Head Scissors Whip isn't... You know what would actually make a really good signature for him right here? Now that I think about it, if I can find it, uh, is a... There we go. A Frankensteiner. But I don't want one with a pin. Especially not in the big slot. Uh, so since it doesn't look like we have an option... I could have swore there was a Frankensteiner whip, though, in this slot. And maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe it's the original Franken... There it is, the original Frankensteiner. So that's the one we want there. Because that's... It's a, a high-risk move. If you botch it, you get powerbombed, which is what we want. Uh, to the point where I might even consider that a signature because he's a big man. So we'll we'll mark that as a sig right now, but we could come back and change that later. Uh, looking at the post attack, he's got a back elbow right now for somebody like him. That's sort of smash mouth with a little bit of high risk. I'm not sure what we want to go with. But we'll play around with these and look and see if there's something in particular that... Okay, see, so like that front kick right there stands out to me. That's that's a real smash mouthy kick to the face. I could live with that. Uh, jumping elbows, decent. Kangaroo kick, not so much. We're, we're not going to see him flipping around like that. Uh, jumping knee butt, probably a little too athletic for him. Let's see, monkey flips, decent. Phoenix kick, nah. Uh, nope. <laughs> Rolling capo kick could actually work. But I'm not super fond of that. See, if we did the somersault kick, we could actually make that a signature, and that would be kind of cool. My only question, I think the summer, yeah, it leaves them on the ground though, which I don't like. If there was a somersault kick that left them in the turnbuckle, I would take that as a signature, because then we could follow it up with something else. Uh, spinning drop kick in the corner seems unnecessary. Probably just going to go with that big lunging kick that we saw after all, because that seems really good. However, I do want to make a very important point here. If we go with that big lunging kick, what we're not going to see is we're not going to see that move super early in the match. The percentage is probably going to be either zero or low in the low to medium damage ranges, because we don't want him to immediately whip someone into the corner and go for that kick. That's a little crazy. Uh, for the double team one... You can go with the same one, or you can go with something a little more generic. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to leave him with a Lariat in there, uh, mainly because that doesn't get used all that often. Okay, corner to center, we don't necessarily need, but if we do pick one of these, usually I try to make it a signature because these moves are really, really cool, and they like have a build-up and attention to them because you stand there for a second before you do them. Uh, so the leg step Lariat could work there, but I'm not a huge fan of it. That could work, but we're not going to go with that. Uh, the Nomasugi knee, that's the original um, Shining Wizard. We could go with that, but I'm not a huge fan of that either for him. Running elbow butts, pretty basic. Like, that's the thing. Most of these things are not things that I feel like he needs in his moveset. And that's, that's the thing with the corner to center moves. Is it's really, because they're so cool and we want them to be signatures, I try not to give them to people unless... They're going to be sort of an iconic signature for them. For example, you'll see the uh, modified jumping knee kick here, used by Evil Miss in almost every match. That's one of her signatures. Nobody else really has that. Uh, so unless I'm going to use it as a signature, I tend to stay out of this one, and that's what we're going to do this time. Tope Suicida to the outside is fine, but I wonder if there's a little more crash and burn we can get out of that. No. Uh, yes. No, we're not doing handsprings. Elbow Suicide is pretty good, too. Uh, Spaceman Plancha is good. 
That could be decent. Don't want the dropkick. Dropkick's way too technical. Tope Kongiro might be better. Yeah, that's just a straight leap over the rope. We're gonna go with Tope Kongiro here. The other thing is that focuses on the body. Whereas, like, the Suicide Elbow, I think, focuses on the face. So we'd rather get that in because, once again, we're trying to work that body over. Frankensteiner here gonna work on the face. That's a body, that's a body, body, body. So you can see that there is psychology being built up here. And because we have that dangerous DDT, it does allow us to put a couple moves in that strike the head, which just sort of work as nice filler moves to... They're not filler moves, but they're moves that help the match flow. Things like this elbow butt. Uh, okay. So, rope slingshot to the outside. Sledgehammer is usually something I go for with uh, basic high flyers, which is what he, what Phoenix is. However, I wonder if there's something a little more... Yes. See, like, I, I think the plancha suicida is better here. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, rope slingshot from apron to inside. He's got a flying body attack right now. I wonder if there's something we can do that's a little more crash and burn. See, like, that elbow attack's pretty crash and burn. Same with the knee. But I think those might be a little bit more technical than than Phoenix necessarily is as a high flyer. Uh, that's a little more likely, I think. The elbow could work too, but if we do this, then obviously it should be a signature. Uh, so I'm gonna go with that. I think that's a, a good idea. That gives him a nice high flying signature. It is to the face, which makes me sort of sketchy because I'd rather have some more damage to the body. Um, but that being said, I don't really like this body attack that much. Yeah, I, I'm not a huge fan of that body attack. So we'll go ahead and keep the Swan Dive Elbow. That's fine. And then once we get down here, we've got run-up turnbuckle moves. Not going to do those with him at all. If you do do these, one thing I will say is very, very important, and this will be more when we get to the logic. Put priority pins. That one has a pin built in, so it's fine. But if you hit that triangle jump Enziguri, your dude is going to pin. Logically, you hit a big move like that, you're either going to follow up with something bigger, or you're going to pin. So you should be set to do that. And the whoops here do not underestimate the comedic value of the whoops. The whoops is great. Uh, so don't feel bad if you decide to use the whoops. Honestly, the whoops is something that I would use with him if, uh, if we actually plan on having him run up the turnbuckle. I would put that in one of his slots and put it to a really low percentage so that you could see him with it because he's a bigger dude trying to do these these high-flying moves. Uh, okay, so since we have a diving to grounded opponent here in our small medium, what I'm gonna do with the big slot is I'm gonna leave that a standing one, I'm gonna use the medium slot for a standing one, and then we'll use this small for a grounded opponent one. I I'm sort of abbreviating how I'm saying this, guys. Part of that is just because I'm kinda tripping over my sinuses right now, don't mind me. Uh, okay, so for grounded diving moves, I usually go with something pretty simple. Uh, an, elbow do uh, an elbow drop here is perfect. A back elbow drop's actually really nice. Um, hmm. I think we might go with this appeal diving elbow drop because it does have a pinfall built in, and that means we can save some on the priority slots because we don't have to prioritize a pinfall to it. We realistically still should though, and here's why. If I hit that appeal diving elbow to an opponent that's facing up, there's a pin built in. If I hit it to an opponent that's facing down, then nothing happens. So we'll still probably want to chain a priority to that pin. And when you do stuff like this, I want you to be thinking in your mind, five, right? Five is the number of moves in your move set that should have the potential to actually end the match. Uh, in our case, Senton Atomico, one. Um, Dangerous DDT 2. We definitely want those to be able to end the match. The Swan Dive Elbow Attack, not so much. The original Frankensteiner, not so much. The Flying Lariat, not so much. But the Senton Atomico and the Dangerous DDT should absolutely be able to end the match. Uh, the Appeal Diving Elbow Drop, not so much, which is why we won't use it in critical damage. Uh, so our next one here is going to be to a standing opponent. <sighs> <laughs> That, that doesn't sound good. Welcome back, Goth. Yeah, Carl World Cup spilt the coffee everywhere, so we had to make a mad dash to save all the bloody equipment. <laughs> That's trouble. Um, mm. We have made it all the way to our jumping from post moves, and we've got oh, a nice right. little theme here going with some, some fun suicide moves like the Tope Kongiro. 
uh, which okay. should be great for a big man to see him diving over the ropes. In fact, mm. I'm not going to make that a signature because we won't see that spot enough, but I'm actually, you know what, maybe I will. Now, if I make that a signature, I'm not sure if I still want the swan dive elbow attack. I think I might actually get rid of that. Yeah. I think a springboard to the inside of the ring doesn't make as much sense for him. We don't really have very many other moves that are springboards for him. Mm. Okay, yeah, I'm going to pull that. Um, and then we were working on our first attack, diving attack to a standing opponent, which should obviously be Deep, deep Impact right here. I'm, I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If you're going to do an early attack to a standing opponent, don't make it something like a Deep Impact. This is something that should be either a signature or a finisher. Uh, same with the diving cutter here. Not really something you want to just be a standing attack. However, that elbow attack right there is okay. Mm. Um, but I think we might go a little more basic than that for our very first standing strike. Because this is going to be our lower percentage one, so we're going to go with a sledgehammer. Everyone can do a sledgehammer. Uh, and then the other one we were looking at was that diving elbow, which I think is actually a great one for... Yeah, for him, that's perfect. Just dive, barrel straight into them. Nailed it. Uh, okay, dive from the top. That one's easy. We can take our Senton Atomico. Uh, it doesn't get used very much anyway, though, so don't even worry about that one, really, in my opinion. So for striking contest here, we can go elbow butts. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to stick with that knuckle arrow. And the reason why I'm sticking with the knuckle arrow there is because the knuckle arrow is the only move in the strike contest, I believe, that has the potential to cause people to bleed. Uh, and that's a very, very powerful thing for storytelling. With this mm -hmm. character, we want there to be more bloodshed. He's a more roughneck, brawly style. So keeping that knuckle arrow there makes a lot of sense. Um, let's turn the voices off on these real quick. Okay. Combo clincher here. We could go with a drop kick. I'm actually not super opposed to that, but I think that something like... The jumping high kick here might make a little bit more sense, or perhaps... No, we're not going to do a super kick. <laughs> so, yeah. my, my inclination is almost always to go to the super kick, because there's no better way to end a strike exchange than super kicking the hell out of somebody. But it also doesn't really fit thematically with this guy, so we're not going to do that. Uh, I think we're going to go with this jumping high kick here. I think that makes the best sense. Because it kind of looks like an enziguri. I wish there was actually an enziguri there, because I would just end with that. Um, okay, so we are on to our small grapples. I am going to actually mute my mic for one second, though, and uh, turn the camera off because my nose is getting really bad and I need to take care of that. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Okay, we are back, uh, and we are in our small grapples. God, that feels better. Um, so when we do small grapples, there's a couple of things we want to keep in mind. The very first thing to keep in mind is that they don't all need to ground somebody. In fact, with the small grapples, it's better if they don't. And the reason for that is this. If you get a grapple and you land that knuckle arrow, you will immediately grapple up again and follow it with another grapple, so it makes the pacing a little bit faster. Whereas if you hit a body slam, what's going to happen is your guy's either going to be quick enough to follow up with a ground move, or he's going to pick them up, which makes very little sense in the early running of the match. Or the guy's just going to pop right back up anyway, and it's just going to weirdly slow the pacing. Uh, so what I tend to do here is for the very first small grapple, I go with something that'll keep them standing. Uh, that knuckle arrow right there works pretty well. However, we could do the body punch. Pretty much anything from the punching, chopping, elbowing uh, set, or the kick set, or the palm set will work here. We just don't want a bunch of big grapples. Um, so in this case, since this is the straight up small slot, I'm gonna do something that leaves them standing afterwards. I actually really like this hammer punch a lot lately. I'm going to go with that. I'm not sure if that actually does damage to the body or the head or both. Um, but it doesn't... In, in some regard, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, okay. So then for our up, we have a body slam here. I'm not super fond of having body slams in the, the small slot anymore. And part of that comes from me hanging out with a lot of people that uh, build Territory Day wrestlers or whatever. But I honestly still think that there's some merit to that. A flying mare is fine, I think, but body slams in the, the small slot seem a little too much. I like there to just be a lot of strike exchange early, and then we maybe start to see body slams in the medium slot. Uh, so I'm going to replace that, but we'll do that later, because the first two I want to do are the ones where we leave them standing. And I put those in the small and the small left-right, and then I use the up and down slot to do the grounded ones. 
the reason for that is because sometimes if I'm trying to set somebody up and they have a specific ground move, in the up slot I'll put something that leaves them face up when they're on the ground, and in the down slot I'll put something that leaves them face down when they're on the ground. So the body slam here is a great example of something that does leave them face up, and the hammer blow is a good example of something that leaves them face down. Uh, we're not going to necessarily use those though. So coming in here, I think maybe an elbow here would be a good thing to give him. Uh, once again though we want to make sure it's one that keeps them standing. Wait, wait, wait. What's the other one though? We do have that hammer punch. I wonder if there's something we can find that'll hit the body. That might be a better idea. Even just that body punch right there could be decent. Um, could also look at kicks here and just get like a basic front kick. Uh, this is actually a good place to put a groggy move in if you want that. I feel like early on might be... Actually, you know what? No, we're going to put a toe kick B here. And the reason we're putting a toe kick B there is because not only does it leave them standing, it also leaves them groggy, which means while it may be a little much in the early running, as we get later in the match, this toe kick will be the move that we use to set up for our groggy strikes. It'll be the move that we use to set up for big running off the ropes attacks. Uh, having a groggy move in your move set is almost required, in my opinion, because it's that useful. Okay, so now we are in the, the slots where we can start laying people out on the ground. Uh, for that, we may look at some clotheslines or lariats. Doesn't look like there's a lot of them. Uh, this is another great low grapple, though, especially to use in your, your running counter slots. The arm whip and the cyclone whip. These are arm drags in America. Very, very basic early running grapples that are fine. Same with this hip toss here. Um, in this case, though, I was hoping to find something else. Body slam's a little much, I think. High angle body slam is even more much than. <coughs> Fireman's carry is kind of nice, especially for tech guys. Fireman's carry is great. Uh, hmm. Where's one of the elbows that puts him? That's a good one. I like that as an elbow that puts him on the ground. Uh, so now we've got keeps him up, puts him on the ground face up, groggy, and then right here we can honestly leave that hammer blow if we want, but I think what I'm going to look for is the double axe handle. I'm reasonably sure there's a double axe handle in here, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, where is it? Sometimes the categorization doesn't match my perception of the categorization, and that makes it harder for me to find stuff. Elbow stamp, it's not going to be in there. I think it is just that hammer blow. Okay. I was just making sure, because I know there's another one where you, like, double axe handle them, and that for sure puts them on their stomach. Okay, that'll be fine. That'll put them on their stomach, and now we're into our medium slots. So with the medium slots, we're trying to finally get into that, okay, now we're really grappling phase. Mm -hmm. So for these, we're going to get a little more aggressive. I still include a strike usually, and I'll even include some strikes in this slot that still keep them standing. Uh, usually, though, if I, I pick a strike here that's going to keep them standing, it's also one that's going to leave them groggy. So things like the face raking bee or the face slap B, or that, or the jawbreakers, and well, the jawbreakers not so much a strike, though. Uh, Manhattan drop, Mongolian chop, one, two elbows. Those are ones that I really, really like to use in this slot, but I think Terran uses those right now, and I don't want to do that. These short elbows right here are great, actually. Uh, so I'm going to go with that, although it is a combination of three, and that makes me kind of sketch in the medium slot, because that's a little much. Uh, let's see if maybe there's something else. Thumbing to the eyes. There's a lot of dirty moves that do the groggy, uh, and that makes those kind of ideal for this. However, that's not really what we're going for here, so maybe not. But like a face straight right there, that'll leave them up. Maybe we just look for something that doesn't necessarily leave them groggy, but still fills this slot pretty nicely. Uh, big sledgehammer there, that works okay, but that'll put them down. Upper blow leaves them up. Wrist punch leaves them up, but it looks kind of weak. I wonder if there's something fun in the elbows. And not so much. That one's okay. Let's do that. Let's give him a nice elbow smash there. And then in our right and left slot here, we can do another strike that's going to keep them up. Uh, perhaps just a... Actually, one of my favorite lately has been this side body knee lift. Just a great little strike for keeping people in a standing position. Uh, and then we'll go for our ups and downs here, and at that point we can really, really start to put in some, some nice grappling. 
Uh, and I'm gonna look for things like, let's see, what do we have available that's a nice sort of strong grapple to have here. We do have our body slams here. That's a, a good idea for us to include. So I might actually just grab a basic body slam for this one. And then for our down slot, I think we do have a double axe handle in here that leaves them face down, uh, which is, there's something nice about the pacing of starting out with sort of a single arm axe handle in the small slot here with this hammer blow, and then shifting up in the medium slot to a, whoa, where did we get a DDT? Uh-oh, was I looking at the wrong slots? What happened? Oh, I was, my bad. <laughs> I just totally messed that up. Nice job, me. Uh, this was a toe kick beat. Okay. No, that was not a toe kick beat. I am so bad, guys. I, I am so bad for that. I apologize. Uh, it was the elbow stamp there. How did I end up... Oh, that's so frustrating. Whatever. Uh, okay. So in this case, we want to go ahead and put that other move back. Oh my god. Goth, what was the other move? Help me. I'm, I'm panicking. Uh, side body uh, knee lift, right? There we go. Side body knee yeah, lift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why you put me on the spot like this? What? <laughs> Let's go for a body slam here now for our up slot like we were going to originally. And you'll notice that there are better grapples available to us. One of the things about that is that just because something is available in a slot doesn't mean you necessarily want to use it. Just because it's there doesn't mean you want to use it. Definitely be asking yourself as you're doing this, does it make sense to put this here? Uh, let's see, what else can we get him that's going to be kind of nice and work the body? Side Buster there is decent. Actually, yeah, let's go with that. That's going to leave them face up, though, and we wanted something that would leave them face down. And I think we get that in that sledgehammer. There we go, that's what we wanted. So there is a nice sort of gradual... Uh, flow to him starting with a one-handed hammer blow and then moving up to this sledgehammer in the medium slot. That definitely tells people the pace of the match is increasing because now he's two-handing that. Uh, so moves like that that are related but not the same are great for building up the pacing of your match. And now once we get into the big slot, that's when we can really, really start to lay in on like some <laughs> of these strikes. So we're going to go with that short elbow B that we liked right here because that'll be another one of those moves that sets up for uh, groggy strikes and off the rope stuff. And then we don't have to worry so much about not grounding people at this point. You should ground people with your big moves. Your big moves can ground people. It makes sense for them to ground people. They absolutely should. Oh god, this is vicious. We're not going to go to that though because that's... If you... Here's one thing to keep in mind, guys. And we'll get into this once we get to the logic tutorial more. If you take a pile driver or a power bomb or a DDT or something big like that that people can finish matches with and you don't pin after it, you're hurting your own matches. Because it just makes it seem illogical. If some dude hits a big, like, power bomb and doesn't cover, you're like, why didn't he cover there? And don't get me wrong, there are stories that they tell in wrestling where a guy hits a big move like that and it makes sense for him not to cover because maybe they hate each other and he's trying to punish the other guy. And if that happens in one of your matches and you're like doing commentary, sell it like that. Sell it like that. Be like, he hates him so much that he's not covering here because otherwise <laughs> it just looks weird. Um, okay, that was my, my little rant on that. <laughs> Uh, let's go ahead and look at maybe some Brain Busters here, because we don't really have a Brain Buster or a Suplex, as Goth would call it. Yes. <laughs> uh, and also, this is this is another place where you want to be careful. Like, now that we're in our big slots, I have a tendency to go for really cool-looking moves like that. Problem is, that should probably be a signature or a finisher. Really, what we want here is maybe a delayed Brain Buster or... Uh, what is a delayed long Brain Bliss? Is that just like a really long delay? <laughs> It's like the British Bulldog one, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so we don't necessarily want to do that as much as we want to, like, oh, that's that's kind of vicious right there. I like that. Um, but it still seems a little much. In this case, one of the moves I'm going to use here is a Jumping Brain Buster, and the reason for that is because the Jumping Brain Buster, if you watch the way this move functions, see how much distance the enemy's body covers when you hit that? If you're in the corner and you execute a Jumping Brain Buster, it'll put them in the center of the ring, so any center attacks you have can trigger. If you're in the center and you hit a Jumping Brain Buster, it'll put them right next to the corner, so any high-flying moves you have will potentially trigger. 
What I'm saying is, if we hit this and it's in the center, then he'll probably go for the Flight of the Phoenix afterwards, so this is a great setup. We're gonna go with that. Uh, there is another setup in here that I really, really like for people that have high-flying finishes. I'm not sure if we'll end up using that here, though, uh, and that is the Samoan Pop. If you haven't looked at the Samoan Pop as a potential setup for your high flyer, you should. It's phenomenal. Uh, let's look at that real quick. Where are you at, Samoan Pop? I ask as I scroll through the things that are in alphabetical order. Uh, okay. So as you can see, that's why that's great. If he hits that right next to the corner, for example, bam, they're set up for a high risk move. Uh, so that's something we could potentially pick, but it's not something I'm necessarily going to go for. I think in this case, we may actually benefit a little bit from having some more traditional uh, large grapples like a pile driver or a power bomb. There are some tricks. There are some tricks to having power bombs and not pinning after them and having it not look bad. Uh, and one of those tricks that I like to use is using a priority to chain. So early in the match, low to mid damage, even high damage, you'll pin after the power bomb. But if they're in critical damage instead, he'll do a ton. Something like that. Taking advantage of that time in another way makes it make sense. Another thing you can pick in your high slots, and you honestly should in some cases, is something that does have a pin built in. Like that crucifix power bomb right here, or the jumping bomb I think is the one that has a pin. Yeah, so we could give him that. That's not super finishery. Like, it doesn't have to be a finisher. It kind of should be, so I'm, I'm not that inclined for that. I might just look for a regular power bomb with a pin. So, yeah. That's a good one. Uh, and because we have that in our big slot, we will set that to very, very low. Like, 3%. <laughs> 3%. And honestly, maybe lower than that based on the finish we got to uh, Marcus's match at the Blackouts. <laughs> You're really rubbing that in, aren't you? Hey man, if you put that on 3% and that went down like that, I'm just saying maybe I should change that theory a little bit. Uh, but I think it's okay to have like one pin in this this slot, and for him the powerbomb pin makes sense. Uh, okay, so for our last big move, this is going to be something we want to work our psychology, so we're really, really going to want to look for something that goes after the body. We could do some sort of spine buster here. Uh, <laughs> let's give him the rock bottom. That's not a signature, right, guys? No, that's a terrible idea. Uh, the STO here, that's actually a really good choice, potentially. So is that one. Uh, water wheel drops okay. That is not one we're going to take, because that's somebody's finisher. Probably not going to take that either, although that could actually work. I mean, that that is kind of finishery, but we've seen enough people use that spinning Uranagi just as a regular move. I think I'm going to go with the uh, Asutagari Buster, though, which is the STO. I'm not doing this variant because we actually have someone using that variant, so I'm going to use that variant because it's faster and it's straight to the body and I like it. So there. <laughs> okay, so that gets us all the way through our front grapples. Now we're on to our back grapples here. Sledgehammer is okay as a starting move here, but I would rather use... I pretty much always go for the neck smash in the the low damage on our back grapples here, unless they're a high flyer, in which case I might put in, like, the uh, kick to the back of the knee. And the main reason for that is just, like, when you grapple them in the beginning of the match, that's what I want you to think of your small, your small slot moves as. If this is the first move of the match, does it make sense? If the first thing that happens when he back grapples them in the match is that he hits a next smash, is that okay? Sure, that's great. Now on the other hand, if we went with something like, uh, what's a good example? High angle drop kick, maybe a little too much. Uh, kneel kick right at the start of the match, a little too much. Same with that command elbow. So the next smash here works fine. Back neck breaker is great, totally fine with that, but we may want something that works the body a little bit more. Uh, that command elbow there actually makes a lot more sense. So I'm going to go with that uh, in our big slots here. So the schoolboy here is a very interesting problem, right? Because we definitely want roll-ups like that, especially on a face. If you have a face and you don't have a schoolboy or some other quick flash pin, it's honestly a wasted opportunity because flash pins work really great for faces. That being said, you have to be careful about how much percentage you give those in the logic once again because you don't want it to fluke win all the time with that schoolboy. Uh, sleeper hold here is fine. I use the rest holds mod, which makes it so that any submissions that are not signatures or finishers can't actually end the match. 
Uh, so that means that if we put the sleeper hold here, he'll work it, but he won't finish the match with it, which is great. Uh, leg lift backdrop is okay. Not even going to bother changing that. Don't want the one with the pin here, though. Gonna take the voices off that, and let's let's find something a little more uh, focused on the body and not not finisherable. Like we don't want to finish a match with this. Let's see. Don't want face busters, obviously. Uh, choke slam could be interesting, except for that's not really a choke slam. <laughs> no. They're like, here, do this choke slam. I'm like, yo, that's not a choke slam. Uh, that full Nelson Buster could actually work pretty decent. Uh, atomic Drop not going to work great. A Side Buster here could work good. Oh god, and I love that Reverse Drop. This this move right here is a phenomenal setup for a face-down ground move. Um, I actually have Evil Miss set to priority this now into choking the throttle, and it looks so sick when it goes off. Uh, I'm going to go for the full Nelson Buster here. I think that one's fine. And it does damage to the body, which is what we're after. It's not a signature, so it should look kind of basic. For our counters here, we have an elbow butt and a rumble. Those seem a little bit too similar to me. There is some nice synergy there, though, where you can use, like, the elbow butt a lot more and the rumble more sparingly, and it'll look like you kind of ramped up your reversal. Uh, but I'm going to see what else is available to us as a, a reversal here, because, oof. The low blow is a great one for heals, but you want to set it to a really low percentage. Uh, I just want to see what's available to us. That is a modded move right there, the Balor overhead kick. Um, and I'm not going to be using that for sure, because he's not that agile. Coconut Crush is okay. Uh, the more grapply ones, you wanna you wanna use more sparingly for sure. See, having an overhead kick, I mean, I guess that's not that different from the Balor kick though. I don't think he's agile enough for that. Russian leg sweep makes sense. I think I'm gonna do the the elbow butt and a Russian leg sweep here instead of the rumble. Uh, Russian leg sweep just a great sort of back counter grapple in my opinion overall. Like you can pretty much use it anywhere. Uh, okay. Running it down to opponent. So this is interesting because depending on whether they're a high flyer or not, this is how you're going to set your pacing a lot of times. High flyers, in in my logic, usually have more Irish whips, which means that they have more running. So that makes them look faster paced. Uh, and they have more of these running down grapples or down strikes because, once again, makes them look faster paced. For a guy like Phoenix, this is not going to be something he does very often, though. He'll, he'll do this more towards the end of the match, but he's not going to open doing this very much. And we want to be cognizant of that and try to pick something that makes sense uh, for that. Hmm. Sunset flips okay. Stomping is okay. Actually, stomping is probably great here. There. Oh, I love that. That's what we're going for. It's like a flight of the phoenix only to a grounded opponent. In fact, we may actually designature something so that we can signature that. Yeah. I, I actually think that's kind of great. Um, another thing about signatures too, guys, I don't know if you know exactly how signatures work. They essentially just add one level of damage, I think. Uh, so for that reason, they're not like super important. Uh, they do matter if you use rest holds because obviously they define what submissions can end matches. But the other reason they matter is because they make the crowd pop. So if you're going to use something a little more frequently as a signature, that's fine too. Like you want to have one signature that's kind of spammable because that's where you're going to get a lot of your crowd pops from. And for us, that's kind of our Flying Lariat and also our uh, our Layout Style Sunset Flip now. So now we get to the grounded moves. This is very important. What is the one thing that every single wrestler on the planet does in every match? Goth? Canadian Destroyer. No, that's just so okay. <laughs> I mean, it depends. Are we talking about the Young Bucks in the Indies or just, you know, matches in general? Anyways. Well, actually, they don't do the Canadian Destroyer that much. Their, their spam moves super kick, so... You, you realize the Meltzer driver is a tombstone pile driver with a Canadian... Well, I guess it's not. Yeah, it's but that is their flip. finisher. That's true. That's true. Anyways, moving forward. I love the Young Bucks, y'all. I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> so, the one thing you will always see in a wrestling match is a stomp. Sounds stupid. Stomps are always happening in wrestling matches, and it makes it really easy to pace the ground game. Uh, we've got a stomp here in the big slot. That doesn't make any sense. We want our stomps to be in our medium slots, and we want to have a couple of them, maybe. And the reason for that is because early game, you don't want your guy to suddenly slap on, like, a dragon sleeper in the beginning of the match. Like I said, think about this like the first move you see in the match. Your guy hits a clothesline and then goes straight to a dragon sleeper. That's a little much. 
Uh, a clothesline to a stomp to the arm? Sure. No problem. So stomps are very, very good for that. Uh, you can also do things like uh, falling fist drops are good for that. Mounted punches, a little too much. Like, you don't really see people opening a match with that. Uh, same with these kind of chop moves. They're not really great for that. Basic elbow drops work. Basic leg drops work for the same thing. Like, they can replace a stomp, in my opinion. Uh, I would usually use those more with a high-flying edit, though. Like a real high flyer, not this guy. Because <laughs> this guy's not a real high flyer. He's a big dude that can fly. There's a difference. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to want some basic stomps here. And honestly, we can just... That's not a stomp. That's a knee drop. We can uh, just take a stomp to the stomach. That's great here. And then in our opponent down one, we could also take a stomp in the medium slot. However, it's worth looking at... Not the face elbow. Uh... Ch -ch 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 it might be under kick still. There is the the stomp where they grab the leg and they actually like lift it up and then stomp it. That one I tend to either use as a graduated uh, move that sort of follows a regular stomp, or I'll actually use it as a replacement depending. So here once again we can do stomping back and we're fine with that. Uh, but once we get to the, I mean that was near the legs, wasn't it? Weird. I'd expect that to be here, but I'm not seeing it. Uh, the thigh kick is another one that's actually kind of okay. Uh, thigh kick, great if you have a leg submission. That is a great bit of psychology right there. That's why Bre uh, that. That's why Bret Hart used it for the sharpshooter. Absolutely use the thigh kick if you have a leg submission. I'm not sure where that would be. I know it should be in here, though. Now I'm gonna... I apologize, everybody. You're gonna have to bear with me, because now we're gonna look for it. Because it is such a great move. Uh, these groin attacks as well. I would tend to put those in a higher damage thing. I wouldn't put them at the, the basic starting move for the ground. Uh, knee drops are also a little much, I think. Low kick here works great. If you have an edit that's not inclined to like do any high flying at all, a low kick is phenomenal. Uh, where is it? Come on, you. I know you're in here. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's further up or something. Maybe, yeah. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep looking. Anyways, you guys know what I'm talking about, though. You've seen people do it a million times. They grab the, the foot, they lift it up in the air, they put their foot on the back of the person's knee, and then they stomp it into the mat. Uh, that one is a great little bit of build-up. It may actually only be available in the big slot, so we will do one of the big slots next. Um, so this is our face-up near-the-head big slot. Want to keep in mind our psychology here. We're trying to work the body. We're also trying to be aggressive and roughneck. Uh, so we could go for a submission of sorts here that works the body, but realistically, we're not going to see him pulling out a full Nelson Camel Clutch. That's a little bit too technical for us. Uh, what we might see, however, is a flying body press. That, that could potentially be a thing. I'd rather avoid that, though, because it's a pinfall. Uh, and instead, I would go more for something... Like, honestly, that that's pretty great. It's kind of heelish, but it's not necessarily... No, that's pretty heelish, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so so we're trying to keep him face, so I'm not picking that, but otherwise that's a totally viable move. Uh, dangerous knee kick. Nah, nah. The guillotine drop here actually, I think, makes a lot of sense. Uh, huh. Yeah, I think we'll go with the guillotine drop. Because that's nice and basic, and it still looks good. God, the height on that, though. They really put a good height on those leg drops. <laughs> that mm. looks more like RVD doing a leg drop than it does, like, the whole I'm bouncing off the ropes and hitting that quick leg drop thing. Uh, okay, so now we're down by the legs, and we are in our big slot. And I bet you this is where we can probably find that stomp, but I'm not going to look for it specifically. Instead, what I'm going to be looking for here is a way to work on the body, because most of the attacks down here are going to be focused on the leg, and that doesn't really match our, our MO, so to speak. Uh, so this is the point where we're going to be looking to find ways to work the body from the feet position. And I'm not sure we're going to find a lot. We probably get a knee drop here to the stomach. That's probably a good, solid thing for us to go for. Uh... That's a, a nice little thing, but that belongs to somebody, so we're not going to take that. <laughs> it is a nice little thing, though. It really is. I like that. Um, mm. Nagata lock, not so much. 
This is for Texas Cloverleaf, not so much. See, a lot of these are just way, way too technical. A stomach claw is hilarious and could work, but I, I think that uh, claw holds are kind of silly at, at this point. Uh, uh, he's not Killer Kowalski. Yeah, I, I mean, there was a day when those were really, really legit. That day is kind of past. Uh, this torture half crab is kind of roughneck and and could work, but I feel like that's more of a leg attack than well, a body what attack. What about a um a uh like the uh stretch muffler? Yeah, the stretch. What is that under on here though? I I know what you're talking about, and I think we just passed it, but I don't remember what it's called on here, and I don't think it's the stretch muffler. <laughs> oh crap. Because, well, they're going to be called the Brock Lock, that's for sure. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know what's really funny about that, too, is that the original Brock Lock wasn't even that. Mm. Like, do you remember the original Brock Lock? I liked the original Brock Lock. I can't quite remember. Dude, all it was was a bear hug where he ragdolled them. He would uh, scoop right. them up and bear hug them and just shake them like a ragdoll. And it looked so mm. good. And then they changed it to the stretch muffler, and I was like, this is garbage. <laughs> Why you do this? No, the stretch muffler looks good if you do it the way Sammy Callahan does it, where not only does he have him in the stretch muffler, he continuously stomps on their head. Oh, there it is. It is called the stretch muffler. Yeah, if you're continuously stomping on their head, that looks good. Uh, does that work the body, though? Like, what does that even stretch? It would, it would stretch the legs. It would stretch the hamstring. Yeah, so I mean that's that's not necessarily in line with our our uh, psychology mm. here either. I'm probably just gonna go simple and go with a knee drop to the stomach. That makes a lot of sense here, I think. Okay. Um, opponent down, face down. We got a stomp to the back there. That's great. Knee drop to the back. That could also like honestly, we could leave that and that's fine. Uh, we might look at it just a moment to see if there's maybe something else that's a little more aggressive that we could take. Um, one of my favorite moves that I didn't take for this, but it's it's absolutely something to consider for your face-up aggression. Face-up near head, if you really like being uh, super aggressive, this mounted elbow is just brutal. Like, I, I am drawn to that move for pretty much all of my edits, which is why I'm not using it for this one. Because <laughs> that move is just phenomenal, and it looks roughneck as all hell, but it's, it's a little more than we're going after. Uh, okay, so to the back here... Let's see. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Clap kicks are pretty brutal. Nice, simple little strike that's kind of brutal. Uh, no, we're not using MMA stuff. God, the crown knee kick is just like, have you ever wanted to murder somebody? This is how you do it. Uh, I'm going to force your head back into your body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you know that the human body can be made into a turtle shell? <laughs> Uh, that, that is terrible and brutal and my, my, my bad, everybody. Sitting super kick here is actually a pretty decent move uh, for most people, actually, you can get away with using that. I might just echo the, the face up here and go with another leg drop just for the consistency aspect of that. And it also keeps his moveset feeling basic. Like, we, we don't want him to feel like he is some sort of, like, high-flying masterclass. That's not this guy's style at all. He's just roughneck as hell, and if he whiffs, he's gonna hurt himself, and that's fine. So, like, this big high leg drop being here also fits and matches our guillotine drop. Uh, okay. Boston Crab is actually a great wear-down submission for the back for anybody, but we're not gonna use it in our medium slot because wear-down submissions, for me, don't belong in the medium slot. They belong in the big slot. Uh, what we will put here, though, is something to the back. Headbutt drop to the back is interesting, but we haven't really used any headbutts with him so far. So maybe that's a little much. Uh, double knee press to the back, a little much because this is low damage. So yeah, I'm just going to go with that stomping to the back again. It may seem like I'm using a lot of stomps, guys, but let's be realistic. Stomps are one of the most used moves in professional wrestling. Like... Try to, when you're doing this, even though it may seem like, oh, I'm using a lot of the same types of moves, or oh, these moves seem kind of weak, it's important to remember that we're picking moves for pacing, not for impact. Uh, we're not trying to have every spot be phenomenal. We want sort of mediocre spots so that when we do have a phenomenal spot, it's like, wow, that was really cool. Uh, sorry if I'm getting a little too much into it, but that that's like, <laughs> I love that part of this. Uh, okay, so we were looking at a potentially a Boston Crab here just as a wear down sweat or sweat <laughs> wear down stretch. Uh, totally fine with that. Torture Half Crab, not great there because it's more of a leg move. 
Uh, that rolling camel clutch would be a great signature for someone, which is why I'm not going to take it. I will put the Boston Crab there, though. Pinfalls. So this is interesting, because a lot of times I'll see uh, people send edits that have pinfalls in their, their medium and big slots here. And you can do that. Having a huge variety of pinfalls is totally your prerogative. But it basically means that you can't use these as much in your logic, especially towards the end of the match, and your ground game becomes really one-dimensional. So I tend to not do that. Uh, and when I do my pinfall picking here, I usually try to pick at least two basic pinfalls. So we've got this both hands press, and we've got that back hook leg. So if we wanted to... What? Go ahead. I don't know what it is about that both hands press, but their face looks so fucking stupid when they do that. It, it do. No matter what edit, it is. It do look kind of stupid. In fact, I might actually switch that one for a more stylized pin. So I try to leave two basics. In this case, we could get away with the back hook leg. I actually really like the back hook leg fall pin or leg pin fall. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite ways that people cover in professional wrestling for whatever reason. Although it is weird that he's grabbing the far leg instead of the near leg. Um, so I'm going to leave that one and I'll probably keep this pinfall, which is just a basic uh, face up pinfall. And then for this one, we can maybe switch in something a little more stylized, even a flying body press pin. Uh, Lazy's got that hip drop pin now. That's actually a new thing in yeah. Lazy Dragon's moveset. Not going to go for it. Is that a pin? The iron claw hold is a pin. But technically both shoulders are on the mat, I guess. That That's a very interesting pin for sure. <laughs> that's a pin as well. Uh, so, yeah. not going to pick the stomping fall because that's a little too heel. Uh, what I might do, though don't really want the jackknife hold here. Flying body press is okay. The elbow drop hold pin looks like garbage, and I wish I'd never put that on Kendo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. a moonsault here could be kind of fun. We'll make it low percentage, though, because it, it's not super... Like, as much as it seems weird to say a moonsault isn't super high flyery, if you really look at high-flying wrestling right now, where we have guys doing corkscrew moonsaults as regular moves, moonsaults are basic now, guys. I know. Who would have thought we'd see the day they'd be basic, but they're basic now. Uh, Do you know who, who always had probably one of the best-looking moonsaults ever? Who's that? And I'm not jo joking with this. Okay. Like, because of the way in which he, he did it and how vicious it looked. Terry Funk. I mean, I love Terry Funk, so I'll, I'll agree with that just on the merit. <laughs> Because, no, the, it, don't get me wrong, it does kind of look like a, a crooked moonsault, but the way in which um, not only did he hit it, but he sold it looked very rough, which fits him completely. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Not to mention he's a 60-year-old that can hit a fucking moonsault fair play. Th there is something to be said for that. So yeah. for this face down near legs pin, we're going to pick another one of these sort of more more stylized pin. Lama Histral Cradle, or the Lama, that English, good English. Lama well, Histral English, but... is, is very, very, well, it's not English, that's true. But it's it's a very good one for uh, luchadors. I really like that on my luch luchadors, but I'm not going to use it for this guy for obvious reasons, because he's not a luchador. Uh, the Gato clutch here is actually kind of nice. Not super tech. Actually, what, one that he could use, that's, it's, it's, it's a little tech, but you could feasibly see him doing it, is the Uproot German Suplex. See, I feel like with the Uproot German, I feel like I want that to be just just for example, if we use this during the regular pin flow, like it's going to seem too much for a regular pin, in my opinion. Um, no, I mean, I suppose you could say that. I mean, Marcus has it. I know that much. He does have the deadlift German. Yeah. I mean, maybe if we do a really low percentage, but I don't necessarily want to do a really low I percentage. I mean, it's your edit, so, like, go with whatever, but I'm just yeah. saying, like... I think I might just go cause, with... Because I think the benefit as well, having smaller guys go to do the deadlift German, it makes them seem so much more powerful. That was why, like, Neville did it, or Pack if you prefer now. Yeah, exactly. See, I think it makes more sense with them. With this being a bigger guy, I like the idea of the ghetto clutch being something that's uh, slightly technical. Yeah. So I think I'm going to pick that one. Because I feel like I can use that more and it's not going to be like, hey, look it, I'm using this spot way too much. Because um, with these, I'm going to be setting these to 15% at medium damage. And that's more than one out of ten times we'll be seeing that. 
the mm. uproot German could still be fine, but I feel like it might get overplayed in that. Yeah. Um, and I I know with Marcus he has the deadlift one, but I think we set that as like a big grapple or something, and it has a an acceptable percentage tied I, to it. I can't remember to be honest. Yeah. Okay, so corner grapples. Here's another one that's real important that people people have a tendency not to take into consideration. I see a lot of people, here's three massively cool corner grapples. And why wouldn't you? Cool corner grapples are awesome. What's also awesome is having a basic corner grapple that you can do at the beginning of the match that doesn't look funky. Like, hitting a second rope brain buster three seconds into the match isn't cool. Um, so, what I'm going to do here is use the <laughs> left... Unless you're Jushin from the like, and then it's an exception. <laughs> there are exceptions to every rule, but we live in the yes, land of exactly. the rule, not the exception. Um, so we're going to go with a basic strike here, and we're using the left-right slot just because that's the one I prefer. You can use whatever slot you want, um, but this should be something relatively basic. These hammer blows here are kind of nice. Uh, a punch rush, also kind of nice. Even the mounted knuckle arrow can be nice. The mounted knuckle arrow B is actually really nice because it leaves them groggy afterwards, so you can use it as a setup for something else. Uh, if you have a standing top rope move as a finisher or a signature, that's your setup right there. It's really good. That being said, I think what we're going to do here is probably just go with the hammer blows because if you look, the hammer blows are hitting more of the body, and that's what we want. So that'll be our sort of strikey early game uh, corner grapple, and then after that, we can kind of do what we want with these more high risky big ones. Uh, I'm still gonna try to keep it fairly basic with him because we don't want anything too outrageous. Like he's not high flyery enough to be hitting like a a diamond dust or something, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see what we can get that's just kind of basic. I mean, even the second row brainbuster is pretty decent. Is the Oh, the corner brain buster is the one where they drop them on the... That's kind of great, but like I would give that to everybody if I had the choice because I feel like one of the things that's missing in wrestling nowadays is ring work. Like, actual ring work as far as uh, being a ring general and understanding, well, here's the ropes, I can use that like this. Here's the apron, I can use that like that. We are seeing if, that a lot more, though. If only that was a good move to actually pull off in real life because obviously as many people know that was El Generico's finisher and you could see a lot of the time that was a bugger to pull off yeah well there you go I didn't actually know that was El Generico's finisher so thank you for yes, the education that, it, yeah because uh, it, it was literally called the brain buster <laughs> <laughs> um all right so I think for him that's way too a turnbuckle bomb is great actually that that's Buckle bombs, things that use the ring are my favorite things in wrestling. Uh, in fact, if you caught the Pac versus uh, Hangman Page match, the first 10 minutes of that, I, I was absolutely uh, in, in an ecstatic state because all it is is ring work. The first 10 minutes of that match is them like hitting one move and then... Now Pac's out of the ring, now he's going around the ring, now they're on the rope, now they're, like, there's so much good ring work, uh, good ring work in that match, it's phenomenal. Mm. Okay, so then we have another move here, and that makes me really want to find something else that makes use of the, the ring as a weapon, uh, but I'm not sure what else there is. Oh, there's the snake eyes thing, I don't know what it's under though. It's probably under rough, who am I kidding? Uh, rope trailing here, great for your heels. I absolutely love that. The guillotine whip, that's what it's called. Yeah, we'll give him the guillotine whip. That's a great little let me use the rope as, or the ring as a weapon move. Uh, okay, front avalanche counter, headbutt is fine. Fallback is fine here. We don't want anything super technical. Actually, is there a power bomb in there? There's not specifically. Um, I think there is for one of them. Could be this one. Eh, not gonna worry about it. Eh, maybe I will. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to worry about it, and then I'm like, yes, I am. It's too cool to skip. Uh, yeah, we'll take a powerbomb whip there. That's pretty good. The fallback is fine for his uh, back avalanche setup. Headbutt to the outside is okay, but I'd rather have something like... I wonder if we can find something kind of suicide-y. You know what would be great if they had this and they don't, and it's totally something I should look at potentially mo uh, making? Mm -hmm. It would be great if they had like a setup where you like elbow them, and then you run off the other side of the uh, ring, bounce off the ropes, come back and flying clothesline them to the outside. 
<laughs> I would make that a signature spot for this guy if I could make that, because that would just be super cool. Like, it is the ultimate suicide <laughs> clothesline at that point. Like the, um... Like the biggie spear to the outside. Yeah, exactly. Or like the cactus clothesline. It's essentially yeah. a flying cactus clothesline. Um, speaking of which, why is the cactus clothesline not in this game? <laughs> Come on now. You gotta have the cactus clothesline. Uh, we don't though. So without the cactus clothesline, we'll have to pick something else. Uh, this chest hammer blow looks fine. I'm, I'm gonna go with that. Uh, shoulder butt here is great, provided we have a springboard move. I don't think we do anymore, so we're not gonna go with that. Instead, we'll go with something else. Uh, the stun gun there is alright. I've always been more of a fan of the, the stun gun variant they use on the outside, though, where it's like the stunner. So if we can find that, I'd rather go with that, I think. Uh, but I'm not sure that we actually have that. Oh, that's the brain buster counter to the inside. Leg trip to the outside! That's actually great. Uh, I'm gonna go with that. The leg trip to the outside here is a great move if you've got somebody that has a more hardcore brawly style, because it will take the fight outside. Uh, Alright, MMA stuff I honestly tend to skip over. You can go through and do these, but almost none of our wrestlers use MMA position. In fact, I think right now none of them do. Uh, wait, Bobby Freedom might. So these mm -hmm. are just not particularly relevant to our roster. Uh, you can definitely use them. If you do, same principles apply. Be careful with your pinfalls, because you might not want things to end on a fluke. The fact that you can go from from that position to a powerbomb, the sprawl, I'm sorry, God, has it really been that long since I've trained? Uh, the fact you can go from the sprawl to a powerbomb is absolutely a pro wrestling thing, because that's not a real thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, as well, like, if it, it does come out late match, it does look bloody impressive because essentially it's a deadlift power bomb yeah it, it's it's pretty impressive for sure uh double team moves these are only going to be super important if you have a tag team in fact if you don't have a tag team pick something kind of basic double power bomb here actually works great for us does damage to the body we don't have a tag team in mind so we don't need something more like a a 3k or something else that's going to be more finishery uh one mm. thing i will point out if you are building a set tag team set both members of the tag team to have whatever their tag team finisher is and set a pin priority afterwards for both of the members that way they will both hit their finish and when they do they will cover after it because it always looks weird either that or have them taunt after it house of wolves is a great example uh brayden crim and x all three of them have the 3k there which is why it kind of gets spammed sometimes which is something i'm looking at finding a way to reduce um but they do all either pin after it or throw up the house of wolves sign because that's totally what that is right guys uh anyways <laughs> <laughs> so th my point there is Actually, more so, make sure you have your so you set for marcus Kana, and panda what's that because uh, obviously they've got boosted gear yeah yeah no they they have a similar setup going on except for i think in kana's case i left her with a double enziguri because i was starting to see the finisher spam and i didn't know how to combat uh, it all right <laughs> um that being said, I think the way to actually combat that, now that I, I've done more research, is to lower the percentage of cooperation they use, because that essentially yeah. controls how often they double team. Yeah. So I think if I set that down to more like 10 or 15%, giving everybody the same move with a pin follow-up should work pretty well. Mm -hmm. Double backdrop here is basic and fine. Uh, double corner attack here is probably fine. Yeah, because we don't have a tag team, that's a pretty basic move. Uh, then we get our taunts. Taunts are definitely important for painting uh, the impression of, of the character and sort of letting people know whether they're supposed to be a good guy or a bad guy. You can get that over very, very easily with taunts, uh, depending on which ones you choose. Obviously, the easiest way to get a heal over, just give them the middle finger. Problem solved. Everybody knows where they stand. <laughs> uh, but we're not going to do that with this guy, obviously, because he is a face, so we want to give him something that's... Oh, the faint and agony pose is hilarious. Um, that's a little less like that. I actually kind of like this, the O. Uh, mm -hmm. That's kind of great, but I think there's a triple one that's even better. And I also kind of just want one where his arms are out at the side, because obviously the, the Raven inspiration factors in. Oh, yeah. that's what I wanted. I, I swear there's a kneeling one. I can't remember what it's called, but I know there's a taunt where you kneel and then, like, outstretch your arms. It's like Shawn Michaels used to do when he'd enter. 
Mm. And that's the one I want for this guy if I can find it. Gut pose. Nope. Crane dance. I mean, the nice thing is that one's pretty easy to find because he should just kneel. Taryn uses this one to set up for her uh, heartbreaker because it's got that flipping motion, which looks really cool, by the way. <laughs> when she stands <laughs> up and does that and then hits it, I'm like, yes! Yes! <laughs> that if if you make edits in Fire Pro and you don't flip out when your guys hit that one spot you set them up to hit, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> that to me is like my favorite part of this game, being like, oh, they're gonna hit the spot. They're gonna yes, they hit the spot. Um, <laughs> oh, there is a salute. Awesome, because uh, somebody else wanted that head pointing. That's that's another good heal one. Head pointing, like obviously I'm smarter than you guys. Uh, Nah, come on, where is it at? Give me the kneel down. Yes, that one. No. That one's great for heals, though. Oh my god, El Fuego has that, and, and like, I gave it to El Fuego just because why not, right? And, like, when he hits it, it's always the best moments in the matches. Like, he'll hit a big move and then do it and just be like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> uh, fist pump here, not what we're looking for. Fist side shout, wide-eyed uh, hand raise, not gonna be what we're looking for. God, if I could make him kneel when he does the Rainmaker pose, that would be perfect. Uh, shrug, chop pose, side hop, point fingers. <laughs> there we go. That's what we're looking for. He is called Phoenix. He could flap his way out to the ring. Uh, no, that, that's a terrible idea. The down here is so good. I put that on good uh, for the blackout. We didn't get to see it too often. But that is such a great thing for somebody that's not meant to be a wrestler because then they can hit like a body slam and you just have them drop afterwards like, oh, that took everything out of them. Uh, and I'm not finding this kneel, which is kind of sad because maybe it's not in here after all and I'm just tripping. Sitting cross leg is cool, but not what we're looking for. Uh, o series here could absolutely be something he does. Hero pose. Yeah, he's not going to the ground there. Elegant greeting. So the O series is the one I'm leaning towards right now since I can't seem to find. Adjust tights is a great taunt to have because like after your guy hits a pile driver or a power bomb, you can chain that in the late match and it looks like instead of pinning, he's fixing his tights, uh, which is <laughs> totally fine and people will buy into and it doesn't make it look like you kind of just didn't do the logical thing with the power bomb or the pile driver. Uh, this is great for faces, I feel, the two hand provocation. It's also good for heels, honestly, if you're arrogant enough. Um, okay, skinhead appeal, not gonna do it. Mexican bonsai, not gonna do it. Shocked, pitching pose, finger pistol, hero pose. I mean, honestly, that that's kind of cool, but I don't know if that would work. Head pointing, Latin dance, both hands forward, faint in agony, hand raised. Come on, there's gotta be one just flat out <coughs> kneeling one, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh well, we have the O series. If we don't find the flat-out kneeling one, I promise the rest of this will be faster, guys. Uh, Backflip is fine. Just arms cross, arms cross, the stride vault. Hands cross, clench fist. Fist arm and raise, fighting guts pose, fighting... Uh, 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 banger, <laughs> banger, banger. Fire pause. <laughs> <laughs> that one I feel like is great when they're groggy and you're setting up for a big move. That, that's another thing to consider when you're picking your taunts, is how you can chain them with your moveset. That's a really, really big thing. Uh, for example, if you had an airplane spin, finger spinning one or two right here is great. Same with finger spinning one. Uh, for us, given that we have that high flying move, anything that points up could be a great way to set a priority chain for that. Uh, this one is great if you have like a clothesline finish. Arm raise, looking around the crowd, hands come on, hands raise high, clapping, shout, provocation, wrist check. Uh, wrist check is another great one for if you like, for example, if you have like a DDT or a big suplex and you don't want to cover after them, wrist check is another great one, uh, much like checking the tights. Flex and arm raise, and come on, I know it's in here, I swear it exists, guys, I swear it exists. Oh yeah, there we go, street gang dance, perfect. <laughs> Uh, bomb appeal, cartwheel, <laughs> bulldog or bulldog straddle. Oh, oh, it's one of the bulldog ones, I think. It's the one where it's the bottom part of the bulldog. Surrender pose there is is interesting for heels. I might be able to use parts of that to actually make the taunt that I want later, but that would that would be further down the line. I mean, that one's kind of okay. It's not exactly what I was looking for, but it'll work. 
Uh, sh 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 shout with hands out. Got an. <laughs> Pulling something out of the trunks pose. Double mm -hmm. middle fingers, cross pose, single middle fingers, bulldog pose. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't quite what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, the one that we found, the raise knee muscle pose. That's another good one to remember because that could totally do it. Raise knee muscle pose. Wild shout. Wow, wow. Caveman shout. Hip, <laughs> hip dance. <laughs> there we go. Pray it's for lazy Buddha. Half lap. There we go. That's the one I wanted. The knee down, knee down and point. That's actually the one I wanted. Uh, okay. So then for our regular taunts, I'm actually <clears> going <throat> to grab a couple of those ones we talked about that are just good to have. Uh, adjusting the tights is great. And then let's find another one that's just sort of kind of a basic one that we can use. Wrist check, arm move. Uh, wrist check is okay. Thumbs up. Thumbs up is kind of great for faces, honestly. Uh, or for Sammy Callahan right before thumbs down. <laughs> you know what's really funny is I bet you I could go into Waza and make that a thumb down, too. <laughs> yeah. That would be legit. Uh, staring at hand is not great. Stare, squat style, spool appeal, snapping fingers. Snapping fingers is another great one, like, to set up for a big strike or punch or something like that. Uh, so I'm going to go with snapping fingers for sure. That's another one of those sort of generic ones you can do. And then I'm going to pick a couple that are not so generic, uh, that are a little bit more to his speed. So this one I actually really like because I'm going to use that for, I think, his stage taunt. So he'll do that on the stage, and then when he gets to the ring, he'll do this, which is great. Uh, okay, and then we have one more taunt here that can pretty much be anything. Uh, like I said, though, we kind of want something that's going to give people the impression we're going to the top rope. Uh, so, not arm pointing appeal, but there's one where he, like, points his hands directly up. I mean, that works! That's that's <laughs> as face as you get. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Screw it. Nobody else has that. I'm gonna go with it. <laughs> we'll use that as, like, a priority chain into the Flight of the Phoenix. Yeah. And then our coup de gras taunt, I actually have a lot more options than you might have, and that's because the mod pack allows us to use every taunt in the game as a coup de gras taunt, uh, which has resulted in some very interesting things, like the fact that Nurse Muerto spins like an airplane before she kicks people in the face to finish her strike chain. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Not gonna question why? <laughs> because it's fun, okay? That's why. <laughs> That's kind of great. Ugh, you smell before you hit them. <laughs> uh, but what I'm going to look for here is something more... Um, more like... Oh my god, that that's actually a phenomenal finish for a heel. No, 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 don't hit me, don't hit me. Big move. Bang. <laughs> that's great. Uh, not going to go for the bomb appeal. His finish is the, the big jumping kick. That's something to keep in mind, too. Uh, that's actually kind of great, <laughs> but it might be a little heelish. I mean, you can kind of get over as a, as a, as a sort of heelish face doing that nowadays, honestly. Mm. Um, let's see. Flex and arm raise, wrist check, hands high raise. That's kind of funny. Arm provocation, hand provocation, hands come on. That one's, yeah, that's great. I'll go with that. Hands come on, and then he hits that. Uh, we're going to call the Senton Atomico the Flight of the Phoenix. Now, there's one last thing we're going to do, because uh, I hadn't thought about it, and that is we're going to go through our moveset real quick, and we're going to try to note what the highest concentration of attributes our moves use are and what our compatibilities look like. Compatibilities are less important now, because now that we have a style, we can kind of make better use of those compatibilities and or of the the fight styles and choose the ones that are good compatibility for us, but not too good. You don't want every move in your move set to be compatibility A, because if you do that, that wrestler will go on forever and they won't have a balanced match. They'll just kind of steamroll people. You want to have a wide variety and you want to sort of span the range so that some of your moves that should reasonably tire you out do tire you out. Uh, and in this case, I think actually our compatibility is pretty reasonable. I don't think we even have any A's yeah. going on right now, do we? We have a B right here in the schoolboy. I thought I saw an A. 
Uh, seeing a lot of rough, a lot of power. We actually have a pretty decent uh, mixture of our our attributes here, but I'm seeing a lot of arm, power, rough, agility. Uh, I think we'll probably focus in on rough and agility for him. And yeah, I'm not seeing too many A's, which is actually concerning, because like you should still have a couple of A's in your moveset, like things that don't exhaust you. Uh, so we'll have to look at our style real quick for that. He's currently set to orthodox, uh, and this is this is actually kind of tricky. Give me one second, guys. I'm gonna pull something up for you that I use to help me uh, pick out my styles and stuff. Are you using a controller? Uh, I am not. Because if you use this is a helpful bit, bit of advice for people who use a controller. If you hover back over the unorthodox. Uh, yeah, one sec. Does it show the affinities? Yes, if you uh, click, so basically say like R three on on the right analog stick, the um, it shows you all the controls at the bottom, and then actually says. So if you click on it. Yeah. See. Oh yeah. Traditional. Yeah, 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 no, those those are helpful, but not as helpful as what I'm about to show you. Um, uh, okay. And guys, I will absolutely share. This is not the right thing. Okay, hold on. Uh, when I when I find the correct sheet, I will not only show you guys on screen how it works, but I will absolutely share it with you guys in the description so that you can go ahead and. Uh, I think it's this one. Could be wrong. No, it's not that one. Darn, what do I do with this? Well, actually, I can share a different resource. There's a really, really good resource for finding which uh, which things have good compatibility and stuff. I'm just trying to figure out where I put it. I am not the most organized person in the world, in case you guys haven't figured that out yet. There we go. Attack styles right here. Uh, so this is Lord Moe's Tumblr, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this up as a, a visible thing here. In just a second for you guys perfect that's absolutely perfect there we go uh so when you go in to this website and i'll link it down in the description it's got these little tables that show you the different fight styles and what their compatibilities are and also talks about what they do good and what they don't do so well so for example orthodox wrestlers are great at nothing good at showing off bad at healing they're, they're just not great heals uh and i think for phoenix what i'm looking at primarily since Orthodox is leaving him with really, really bad compatibilities, I want to look at American. American is great at roughhousing, good at showboating, hot dogging, and doing dynamic and exciting things, bad at graceful stand up striking, submissions, and feats of absurd strength. That basically describes Phoenix in a nutshell. Uh, um, just out of curiosity. Yes. Uh, just this my curiosity. What does um, Junior say? Junior says. Great at running and jumping, good at submissions and showing off, horrible at feats of strength. Alright. Um, they also, they they basically have an E compatibility for power moves, an E compatibility for arm moves, but they have an A for uh, running moves, technical moves, and I'm, I can't remember what INS stands for. <laughs> I think right. it's impact moves. Right. Uh, anyways. I, I started X out as a junior, but the majority of his moves were actually, like, kicks and stuff, so it, yeah. it really didn't benefit him that much. Uh, Does it say for all-rounder as well, for the defense? Uh, this is the attack styles. I, the defense uh. styles are slightly different. Uh, the defense styles are even more tricky, but we can get into that when we do logic next time, or we can actually dedicate a whole thing to just the different styles and special skills and understanding what they do, because the descriptions in here are terrible. Like hard body, strong and healthy body doesn't tell you anything. What it actually does is it makes your character more likely to kick out when they're pinned and they're in critical damage. Uh, so that's why we have that for him, because he is a come-from-behind wrestler. So we're going to switch him over to American style, and we'll go back here for a minute and take a look at our moveset. When we do, you'll see that the compatibilities have shifted up. Okay, so that kick is now an A. Now there's some Bs in there. Still got some yeah. Cs and Ds, but we're, we're getting a much better range here. Now I tend to pick the style after I pick the moves, because it honestly just works better. Because the style might not be what you think it is. 
Uh, but definitely mm. check through your move list after you change your style to make sure you're getting what you want out of it. And that, I think, is pretty much everything to cover for moveset. Um, I'm, I'm liking where we're going with this. I think we've got some yeah. real prominent uh, stylistic things showing with Phoenix. And now all we really have left to do is set the logic up correctly, and he should be good for us to test run him, which is super fun. Um, so thank you guys for, for hanging out with us today. I hope you found the tutorial yeah. useful. Goth, anything you want to say? Um, well, not, not really. <laughs> just to say it's nice to be on the show again. Yeah, he, he's thinking fuck Carl, just so you all know. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you for joining us again on this, Goth. Uh, I hope that seeing a little bit of the, the way that I like put the movesets together makes what I, what I sent you as a write-up more sensible. Yeah. Um... Thank you guys for joining us. We will see you tomorrow for, well, maybe not tomorrow, maybe the day after, for part three of this edit creation tutorial. That'll be 103, I guess, at that point, which is the logic, and it should be its own 103, because logic is where it's at. Logic is the absolute hardest part of making fun edits to watch, um, and it's also the best part of it. I love it. I can't wait to share that with you guys. So we'll see you then. Thank you for watching, yeah. and we will see you next time. Bye! Bye. Let's get good. Welcome back to our tutorial on edit creation. Ah, fuck. Hold on, I'm gonna redo that. <laughs> <laughs>